we happen to think that Arsenal, you have to say they're playing better than City at the moment. So going on a knee You've got to win it. Oh, that's it. Arsenal going to win the league. You're doing this to hopefully curse them, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. City will be second. Yeah. I think Manchester United will be third. I yeah. think they've got a good manager and a good squad and they're coming good now. Mm -hmm. I think fourth place will be between Newcastle and Spurs. OK, I can't well, there we are. them at this stage. That's the need. You're Arsenal winning the Chelsea title. Chelsea and Liverpool to miss out. OK, well, what about that, Danny? Your thoughts briefly on that? Um, I love the way, and of course, Andy's revolving. Can you have a revolving carousel? Because that's what it is, isn't <laughs> I think it? You can. It's both round like and definition. round and up and down. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah hmm. absolutely. In fact, I've just checked again. That is the way carousels actually work, <laughs> isn't it? Um, uh, look, it will change again. In, uh, it, be honest, Andy. If Spurs had been had uh, had stayed two behind at Bournemouth, you wouldn't be saying they're going to finish in the top four. It's it's just the way. It, it, it's great for the league. That everything yeah. is so up in the air at the moment. Plus with the added wonder ingredient of completely unnecessary Winter World Cup. Well, that's true. Absolutely. Anyway, let's move on. Let's yeah, look at the first game. That will affect everything. Yeah. There's no question about yeah. it. Yeah. Arsenal 5, Nottingham Forest, nil. That kicks yes. us off this afternoon. As Andy said, a very good performance. You didn't really expect them to slip up, but after the way Forest played last week against Liverpool, you thought they would make it difficult for Arsenal. Uh, well, they didn't, and Arsenal just swept them aside. Um, and the interesting thing is, we've talked a lot about not having the depth of the squad, but on comes on Reese Nelson and, and mm. gets a couple of goals, uh, yeah, maybe yeah. proving there is a bit more depth than everybody thought. It could be it could be a matter of uh, more depth, or is it just another example? And football fans will know, mm. obviously, when things mm. are going wrong for you, everything goes wrong. And when things are going right, conversely, everything goes right. So you bring on Reese Nelson, who even knew he was still at Arsenal, you might say, mm. yeah. and boom, there he is. And, and you know, he start, he, he, he starts playing like Dries Mertens or someone it was <laughs> in that position. Um, really, yeah, it, it's just that everything is going well for them at the moment. And you're, you're not wrong, Andy, and I have to be careful that my own, um, I don't drown in the vinegar in my own mouth here when I say <laughs> Arsenal are really, really good. There's no yeah. point in, in men hiding away from it, Paul. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, it, it, you no, know, they, they are, they're coming they to Stamford Bridge next week. I can't see anything but a big win for Arsenal. It's, oh, hard, it's hard to imagine, isn't it? I mean, you know, just the way Chelsea are playing with their injuries and their back four and the whole thing. It's perfectly set up. I mean, I hope I'm yeah. wrong. But, well, know. the problem is the back five, not the back four, isn't it? Well, you know, it's, 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 we'll come on to them, but, you know, 38-year-old yeah, yeah. having to play twice a week and, you know, left five foot seven left back. At, you know, it's not ideal, is yeah. it, really? I mean, that, that, it's the sort of performance from a Forest point of view that, that says, you know, when we look back on, uh, you know, it's much better to go to Watford next season. Mm. That's if Watford don't come up and maybe win and compete rather than getting beaten 5-0 at Arsenal. It had a, it had a feel of a team... That are going yeah, down, I mean, Danny, didn't it? And really? for the first time, Steve Cooper, after the game, was, I mean, <clears> he had to take out the <throat> biggest of sticks, didn't he? He had to take out his largest possible stick and say they didn't try and they didn't run. And that's often the last gasp, even for a newly contracted manager. Um, when you have to t remind the players of their responsibility to try hard, mm. um, they, they were terrible. I think about Dean Henderson. Um, he enjoyed the early part of the season when he saved that penalty from Harry Kane and raised his cap. I mean, incidentally, that's showboating. The fun police should have gone about that as well. <laughs> um, but now he's preparing what he hopes will be a place in the World Cup squad by picking the ball out of the net over and no over chance. and over mm. again. You're calling for him going to the World Cup. You're calling for a ban on doffing. Is this right, Danny? Uh, is it, on the contrary, a, a doffing on the ban. Contrary, doff away, sir. I would also, I would almost, a bit like Andy's attire there. I would make caps compulsory for goalkeepers. Wow, um, as a, just another way of identifying them. You know. <laughs> what about for all outfield players as well. That's, That's a good idea. Yeah, it could be a great leveler. <laughs> okay, then Arsenal five, <laughs> Forest nil. That's that we, one. we move on. When you hear this music, it's the music that clears the stage in the Oscars when someone's gone on for too long. Producer moves us along every week, and we move on to Manchester United one, West Ham. Nil, a scoreline that maybe doesn't tell the full story because West Ham did come on strong, certainly towards the end, had some good chances. But the man who will miss out on the World Cup, David De Gea, was equal to them, Danny. Yeah, I mean, West Ham, that's one of the, the mysteries of life, isn't it? That they can be so poor away from home and their record is really bad. Um, and yet for the last 20 minutes there, they looked they were overrunning Manchester United. Um, I, I've written down a word that I, ha I don't write very often about football anymore. I used to write it a lot. The word boof. <laughs> um, Marcus Rashford, that header was pure boof, wasn't it? it? Was, um, yeah. And what a pleasure, 
What a play. I mean, I know there's all the controversy about the effect of the long term of heading uh, football, that the footballs are very different than the way they were. I'm not the scientist, I'm not a medical man, so I shouldn't get involved with that. But to see somebody rise and pick your own fish of choice here, um, to belt one in like that with their head, it's just one of the great pleasures of football, isn't it? On the opposite side of that, Fabianski, I'm surprised he didn't come off. Uh, Alan Shearer was so right on match of the day. They've got to oh. have temporary substitutions. You could see Fabianski when he headed mm. the, the mm. effect on it, and it hit the top of his head, and he, immediately afterwards he looked bad, and he, and he and, lasted till half time. It could have been so dangerous. And in the, ga- the game is complicated enough at the moment with the substitutions, but there, there is an absolutely cast iron <clears> case <throat> now for temporary <clears throat> subs for head testing. You know, somebody, all right, the players always want to stay on. The medical people can't be sure. Get them off, have the test for 10 minutes, let them be replaced. And if, you, if they want to come back on again, that's fine. But you cannot have this thing of leaving play, players clearly, to the untrained eye at least, dazed, carrying on playing a, a contact sport. It's not right. No, I don't it's, think it's right. Absolutely. There was right. a good moment in the game, though. There was a bit of, we used to have a thing on the show called mm. the Not Burt Troutman Award. So yes, the Not Burt Troutman and Award. Someone who hasn't shown maybe the bravery <laughs> that Manchester City's goalkeeper yeah. with a broken neck did in the cup <laughs> final. Yes. So I had Ben Rama. He didn't fancy that 50 50 with David De Gea, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> he could have nipped in. He would have got clattered, but he probably might have won. He might have got a goal or he might have got the free kick. It was just, he thought, nah, don't fancy And that. such was the rust on Harry Maguire at the start of the game. I think Ten Hag had a big box of wire wall on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, it, and Brasso it, and yeah. Brasso, he overcame it though, didn't he? As the game went on, he looked he looked Dano a bit. Dallo dug him out of a lot of yeah. situations. But you know, look, he, we said didn't we a few weeks ago? His best chance of getting games was an injury. So that mm. that sadly, from Rand's point of view, is what's happened. So he has to step up. He has no excuses. He has a few weeks now to get game sharp because he's almost certainly going to the World Cup. Isn't You've he? got to feel a bit for West Ham as well. They were unlucky yesterday. They should have got something out of the game. They should have got something out of the game at Liverpool. Mm. They missed a penalty. Mm. They got done at. Chelsea because of that last minute disallowed goal so they've lost three games against good opposition tight you know and it's a bit yeah. unfortunate yes they're better than their record suggests it's as simple Indeed. as that isn't it well uh, we move on then to Crystal Palace 1 at Southampton nil. Oh, the cracker was it well, I mean, they, we were talking last week, one of the, one of the surefire... Well, I don't know if they were listening. I don't know if Ralph Harsen was uh, listening last week. But a surefire way to get under Palace's skin is to give Wolf a kicking earlier on. Well, they... Which is, you know, worked last week, really, because he was getting wound up. But um, didn't work quite as well um, this week for Southampton. But it's a, it's, a, it's a tactic that a lot of teams use. Get into him, he doesn't like it, he'll lose his head. He won't play as well, he'll spend more time rowing and... Chucking elbows about than he should do, but it didn't work this time from uh, from Southampton's point of view. Maybe it's just because I mean, uh, against better teams, uh, getting him riled up probably uh, on balance has worked, but Paul. Mm-hmm. Um, but Southampton, even if they get him going, they they don't really have anything to attack you with, do they? I no. mean, uh, I hate to be disrespectful, you know, in some ways, but this is a, it's like a ghost of a team, Southampton. Where, what is Southampton? Who are their, who are their threats? What are they trying to do? They're turning up, fulfilling the fixtures, and look, the goal, look, think about the goal. Wilf wins the ball, does his spin, moves on to Tyreek Mitchell, Mitchell gets the cross in, and Odson Edwards scores. Those are three pretty decent footballers with the ball one after another. Southampton haven't got that triumvirate of of decent footballers. It's so pale. I don't get it at all what they've tried to do. To be fair, they gave it a good go. Their XG Mm. was higher. Not that that means anything. You're a big fan of the XG. I love a bit of XG, me. XG Jacobs, yeah. 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 But it was, you know, they they should have got something out of the game, but they didn't, and so well done to Palace, I see. Yeah, he did sing out the strikers, yeah. It's the trouble with XG is that it, it, it doesn't allow for human frailty, a bit like VAR in that way. I mean, Spurs is XG at Bournemouth, but that's 17. Mm. <laughs> we get on to that. They, the Spurs should have won 17-2 yeah. and didn't, you know. By the time they got real. going, that's absolutely <laughs> true. <laughs>